Hi, I'm Barbie. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be making some cards with the Four Seasons Springs papers. Here is the stamp and thin cuts that I'm going to be using today. Each of these five items that you has a slight highlight around them do have a matching thin cut. You can purchase a stamp set separately. There's also the Flourish Greetings stamp set I'm going to be using and the Circle Thin Cuts. The open circle I will use to cut my back of my shaker card and this stitched one here will be a frame around my shaker portion of the card. This is a picture here of the card I'm going to be making and these are the pieces that I will need to make this card. I have a card base, a wood grain card front, the frame for the card, the shaker elements, and adhesive. So I'm going to start by adhering this five and a half by four and a quarter piece of wood grain patterned paper to the base of my card. You want to make sure that you have your card fold on the left hand side for this card. So always double check and make sure of the position of your card. I'm now going to put some adhesive on this thin cut frame. I did find that it would have been easier to use liquid glue as narrow as this frame is and I switched that up on the remainder of the cards. So now I'm just going ahead and positioning that frame on my card. I see that it's a little bit off so I pull it up and just readjust it to make sure that it is right where I want it. Now I'm going to go ahead and make the shaker portion of the card. Now our foam and acetate um, comes in a bundle and with the foam you have little squares inside the circle. I took off the carrier sheet from the ring and I'm going to put my piece of paper here on top of that. You could just pull the ring off and adhere it, but I find that sometimes it changes the shape of it a little bit, so I like this way of doing it better. Now I'm going to go ahead and loosen that ring from the rest of the foam pieces, and that way they are still adhered to the carrier sheet. A couple pieces of the protective cover stuck inside my frame so I'm just pulling those off. Now I'm going to peel that film off the piece of acetate so that it is ready to go once I get my sequins and beads inside the well that is formed there. So I'm going to pour in some of the silver sequins and then put in some of those blue beads that I had in my stash just to add a little bit of color to tie it in with that blue flower. And now I can place my acetate on top of that 3D foam. I see a couple beads are stuck to the foam, so I'm just going to go ahead and push them inside and then make sure that it's completely adhered. Now I can go ahead and put the liquid glue on the back of that thin cut frame that I cut from the circle thin cuts. Please excuse my head, I didn't realize I had leaned so far over. The liquid glue works really well in this case because you can get it just where you want it and it does leave some time for you to adjust placement should you need to. So I'm just making sure it's thoroughly on there and you can see those beads and sequins in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive on the back side so I can adhere it to the base of my card. And I'm going to do this one just a little bit different placement than I did in my sample. Isn't that cute? I just love making shaker cards. So let's get these beads out of our way and we're going to go ahead and start with some of the stamped images to embellish with. I have a blue flower, some leaves, those cute little roses, and a long leaf. And I've put some 3D foam tape from that circle on the back side of some of these images to pop them up. I like to add a little bit of dimension to my product projects. So I'll put some on some and not on others. We'll go ahead and put some 3D tape on the back of one of these long leaves. This 3D tape is not so thick that it will um, make your card cost more to mail. It's rather thin. 
so that's good you can get the dimension without having to worry about the thickness and I'm just playing around with the placement of that second long leaf there deciding where I want it I decided to trim a little bit more off that's sticking a little too far out and then I'll put the rose on there and then I'll play with the placement of that long leaf a little bit more because the roses are covering it up just a little bit too much so I just bring it down a tad and uh, then that card's finished isn't it cute love the dimension you can see there so this is the second card we're making using the stitched uh, rectangle frames and I am going to use the medium size for this card where I used the larger one on the previous card I'm also using these flourish sentiments here for the greeting on my card so I have my card base. I'm going to go ahead and attach a piece of ballerina cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I am using the dark side of the cardstock um, facing upwards. All of our color cardstocks have two tones to them. You have the true tone, which is the darker, and you have a lighter shade as well. So it really gives you versatility with your um, cardstock. Now I'm layering on a piece of four by five and a quarter of that floral print. It is so beautiful. Just love it. And now I'm going to take the two stitched frames and put some liquid glue on the back side of them and adhere them at two different angles. Um, they kind of remind me of window frames, don't you think? So with that liquid glue, I'm able to play with the placement there, which really works nice. Gives you some time going to go ahead and put that second one on and then we'll be ready and I could see here my glue was giving me a little bit of trouble I had to unclog it uh, once we get this second frame on we'll be ready to um, do our embellishing I really like having the thin cuts because it makes things just so nice and easy the all these flowers after I um, thin cutted them then I stamped them uh, rather than having to go through the hassle of fussy cutting them. But you can get the stamp set by itself and do the fussy cutting if you desire. So I'm just putting that saying on there from the Flourish Sentiments, tucking it behind that flower. That's one thing nice about the 3D tape. It really allows you to tuck things in behind. And I'm going to add in a couple of the leaves. One of them I've placed some 3D tape on and one of them I'm just going to adhere flat. I like to have a variation in my dimension. And now we just have the long leaf and the roses left. And those I'm going to be able to tuck underneath that frame because like I said I used that wet glue and so it gives me some time to play. And the same thing with the roses. I'll tuck it underneath that frame as well. And then the card is complete. Here is my third card. Um, this one I call an ombre card. I'm using just the Capri Lemonade and Ballerina cardstock, but I'm using both the light and dark sides of each of those three. So it's like having six different cardstocks. Again, I have my stamped and thin cut images. I have some sandpaper and I have a sponge because I'm going to take that toffee ink and just edge distress the edges of that wood grain paper. I apologize for the clarity here in this part of the video. I'm not quite sure what happened as to why it's not real clear. I am rather new at doing these videos so I'm still you know playing with it and trying to figure it out but I would love it if you would like and follow my channel. I'm really enjoying having fun doing this. Here you can see the dimension that that edge distressing gives you. Now I have gone ahead and sandpaper um, distressed most of those pieces of cardstock, but I'm going to show you here how I did it with one of them. I'm using the darker side of the ballerina and I'm just going along the edge and a little bit over the top and I'll just rotate it till I have done all four side edges. And then if you don't have quite enough distressing, you can go back over the top if you desire. But um, I like the way it looks there with just that edge distressing. Just helps give you, you know a little bit more dimension and uh, I think it just gives a nicer look. So this is going to be a top fold card. So I make sure that my fold's in the right position. And I'm going to start with that darkest um, 
of the Capri cardstocks. And then I'll go to the lighter piece and adhere it. And I'm just going to work my way across from right to left, going next with the darker of the lemonade and uh, then the lighter. You could do this with any colors of cardstock that coordinate well together. And I just thought these three went really well with the uh, flowers and other papers that I'm using in this set of cards. So now all I got to do is put the two pieces of ballerina cardstock on. First the dark and then the light. You could change things up if you wanted and do all three dark and then all three light. But I chose to do it this way. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to bring it in a little closer for you to see. Unfortunately, there's a glare. I'm still working on my lighting situation here. And I'm going to position this piece of um, four by, I think it's about three quarters of an inch wide wood grain going across all those ombre pieces. Now I'm bringing in my stamped images that I will embellish with. Um, I have two of the flowers, two of the stems, two of the single leaves, two of the roses, and one of the long leaf. And I again have put some 3D tape on the back side of some of my elements. And here I'm showing you that center from the shaker card again where I'm getting all these pieces. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that blue flower on and then go with a single leaf, tucking it behind that blue flower. We're going to take one of those branches and those I, after stamping them with the avocado ink, I did color them in with the citrus blend, tri-blend marker, just to give them a little bit added color. And the roses I colored with the pale pink tri-blend marker both with the light and the dark ends. Our tri-blend markers do have three shades on them, a light, medium, and dark. So it's like getting three markers with one. Really great value. So now I've just got these last two roses to put on here. And then this card will be finished on the inside. I do sometimes like to go ahead and add some of these stamped images to the inside of my cards as well. I am going to go ahead and do that on this one. This card does keep flipping up on me, so I'm trying to hold it in place while I go ahead and put these stamped images in here. And then I'm going to leave the inside blank. Um, sometimes I like to do that because if I'm not sending the card out right away, maybe I don't know who I'm sending it to. And a lot of times I need blank cards just to write that personal note to somebody. Um, that lets me know I'm thinking about them and maybe the situation that they're going through. So here I've got plenty of room um, beside those stamped images to write my personal note. I think this card turned out really cute and I like the dimension in it. What do you think? So now we're going to go on to our fourth and final card, which uh, I think is my favorite of all of these cards. And here's all the pieces I need to put this card together. And I'm going to sand the two pieces of avocado cardstock and that piece of ballerina, just going along the edges of it with my sandpaper. And depending on the look that you're wanting, you can use anywhere from, you know, a very fine sandpaper to one with more of a rough grit to it just depends on the look that you're going for. And then after you've um, sanded all the edges, it is always good to take a piece of, um, oh, a baby wipe, a dryer sheet, something to just get that excess um, off, which you'll see me do in just a moment here. I'm just finishing up this piece of ballerina and then taking that paper towel to the edges of it to get that dust off so it doesn't get on anything else that I don't want it on. You'll notice I used a piece of scratch paper underneath uh, my cardstock when I did the sanding so it didn't get my Versa mat dirty. Again, this is going to be a top fold card, and we're so we'll start with that four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of ballerina. And again, I'm having the dark side of the cardstock facing up. 
on the avocado cardstocks, I'm also using the darker side of those two. So this piece here is four by five and a quarter inches so that I have an eighth inch frame around. Now I could have gone ahead, since all this is getting covered up, and gutted both of those pieces um, and only left, say, a half inch frame around and that way I could have used that paper on something else. And typically that's what I do. Uh, why I didn't do it on this card, I'm not real sure. But that's what I should have done to that first piece of uh, avocado and the ballerina. Now I'm taking this other piece of avocado cardstock and placing it down there below my greeting that I've already pre-stamped. And I'm going to take the sponge and again edge distress around this piece of wood grain paper with the toffee ink. I really like distressing. That's something that you'll learn um, about me that I almost always do some type of edge distressing on my papers, whether it be with inks or sandpaper or some other medium. So now we can go ahead and attach that piece of wood grain cardstock onto that avocado, leaving uh, again an eighth inch frame around the edges. Now I'm going to take um, some ink and I'm going to go around these pieces of the floral um, paper with it going around all four sides and then I'm going to flip it over because of the way we're going to be folding this paper both sides will be showing so I'm just edge distressing both sides of each of those strips with the um, ink. And I am using the Carolina ink because I forgot to order the Capri ink and fortunately this color does uh, coordinate very well and um, couldn't tell hardly any difference. So now I'm going to fold these um, to make like a V, upside inverted V, and um, just make get them all folded and then I'll play, excuse me, play with the placement of them to get them just the way I want them. I want the um, each floral piece to come over the dotted portion and line up to where it's like making a continuous zigzag I guess you'd call it. And I should not have attached that piece of avocado and the wood grain which I um, momentarily realize that I shouldn't have done that because these pieces hang off the edge and you need to be able to trim them. And so after I attach this first piece, I will pull that up and um, like I'm doing right here so that I can trim those pieces. Fortunately, my uh, adhesive didn't have it so stuck on yet that I could not pull it up without damaging anything. And then I'll go ahead and apply the next one to the farther end. And that way I'm working from the outside corners in to get everything, um, you know, the, about the same dimension. I'm not going to measure and be real picky about it, but going by the eye, I want to pretty much have them um, lining up. When I attach these two pieces, I'm not going to push down on the entire V at one time because I know that I will have to do some adjusting. Um, so I will push down, as you'll see here, on the floral side once I get it in place, but I didn't push down on that dotted side. And now on this one, I'm going to push down on the dotted side after I line it up with that V. And then I can bring those two center portions together to get them to line up and then make sure they're all pushed down, trim the, the excess off, and then reattach it. Fortunately, my adhesive is still real sticky, so I can just push down real well and it'll stick. I can see that I have a couple pieces there of those strips not sticking down, so I add a little bit of adhesive to them to get them thoroughly stuck. And now I'll bring in my stamped images uh, to embellish with. And again, those pieces from the shaker card to attach them with. So I'm putting some 3D tape on that blue flower and positioning it. And then let's add in a leaf 
lying flat. And we'll take another leaf and we're going to do it flat as well. And now we're going to take one of the long leaves. I like to vary things up, not doing exactly the same thing on any one card. And even if I make the same card two or three times, there's always going to be a slight difference in them. So nobody will get the exact same card from me, even if it is typically the same card. There are going to be differences. So here I'm putting that rose on there to finish it up so that the outside is all done. I think that turned out really cute. Let's go ahead and put some images on the inside. So I'm going to do another blue flower to tie in with that outside portion and another one of those branches, a long leaf and a rose. I like to coordinate things so that they go well together. And I will again leave this one blank on the inside so that I can add a personal note later. I like to send, make and send out cards and I typically try to send out at least five cards every week. Um, I start with my list of birthdays and then go from there as to who gets the rest of them. So I think this card turned out really cute. It's just very springy and right now it's cold here in southeast Missouri and so I'm looking forward to the spring. Here are all four cards. I hope you enjoyed this um, workshop. 